It never really looks great. It probably doesn't look great on camera right now where you get this really warm light, even though it's a soft quality light, it's really warm. And then you have outside, it looks really blue and kind of crazy looking. It doesn't look very natural in my opinion. So what I was just talking with Ryan about is how do we film, like if we film Rob right now, if you want to just zoom in on him, you can see that it doesn't really look all that great if you see both Rob and outside because it's just, like I was saying, you get that weird blue from outside and then the warm from inside. So then if we jump back over here, what, what we're gonna do to compensate for that is we'll end up turning off these lights on the interior, just completely eliminating them. And what we'll do is we'll bring up the level of the room. So I'll jump behind the camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So instead of trying to be this kind of like weird in between where you got the blue on the outside and the warm on the inside, his skin looks too warm, outside looks too blue. It's just, it's not a vibe. So even though the shot looks cool, there's a lot of depth. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'll put the white balance. Let's see if we can change this while I'm recording. So what I'll do is I'll put the white balance at 5600 and then I'll set my exposure for the outside. We're setting it to the thing we can't control. So now my highlights are not nuked out. They don't look crazy. And then Justin, if you'd be so kind to go and adjust the lights, so you turn the lights off. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've balanced the light. The only thing in the frame that looks good, in my opinion, right now is the windows, which is perfectly fine. So now, where did Rob go? There he is. So now you can see, and I'm doing this all, I like to do this just on my handheld camera. Just This is the R3 right now. And I like to do this to the 24 to 70. So you can just zoom in, zoom out, see what looks good. The next thing we need to do is we'll add in lights to the frame. So we'll bring up the level of the room, make it brighter inside, and make it just look all natural and it's all gonna be a daylight 5600. All right, so right now I'm gonna get the light to on 150. I'm gonna put it on one of the 600Ds. Rob's grabbing the other 600D from the van, and then we'll also have a 300D. And so basically what my thought is, initially without seeing anything yet, is we'll do one 600D through the big 150. So it's this big soft source. You can push in without looking too sourcey. Uh, and sourcey just means it's like, you know, where you can really tell there's a light, lighting some guy right out of the frame. And then what we'll do with the second 600D is we'll basically just bump it into the ceiling. So just shoot it right up because we have a white ceiling. It's effectively like a big giant bounce up there. So that's just going to elevate the amount of light that's in the, the total room. So it's going to lift the, the level in the room. So you remember the initial image I showed you where it's just really dark. That's going to help lift up the room so it doesn't look so like there's a guy who's lit and then the background that's bright, but then the room's dark, which will look kind of weird for a corporate video. And then the last thing we'll do is we use that 300D if we need to just basically fill in a little bit more light in one part of the room versus the other. So we'll get to it right now. All right, so here we have Justin. You can tell inside it's looking super sourcey. We've got our 600D there. And here's Justin. So if our shot was like this, we expose down a little bit. You can already tell it's looking more balanced at the outside. My white balance is at 5600. We're filming on the shadow side, which all that means is this side of the frame here is towards the camera. And that's basically, even if we're filming corporate videos, we still want to do that most of the time. And you can tell we're already getting closer. Now what I would say on this shot, looks pretty sourcey, like we were talking about. You can tell there's a light there. So I'd probably turn that light down. Let me turn the light down just a little bit more. Just a couple of clicks, a little more, a little more. Okay. That's decent, maybe up just a tiny bit more. And so now the problem we have to fix is the room looks too dark. His face looks pretty good as far as exposure wise. He's a beautiful man. <laughs> and uh, the next thing we need to do is basically our highlights are still pretty bright there. So maybe we expose down just a tiny bit in camera and then we can come up on that light just a little more and we'll put basically the light into the ceiling, which should have us in a pretty good spot. So we've added two more lights from the initial one. Um, I'll put on the screen what it looks like with just the one. Like I said, it's pretty sourcey. And then now we've added our two extra lights to basically fill in the ambient room. Uh, this particular one, Justin, just asked you want to come a little closer. So this is the 600D. I really love this light. I've, you guys have seen me talk about it before, but this one is just the 600D standard. It's the non-pro. Now in my experience, they're effectively the same light, except this one's just a lot cheaper, which is really nice. It's a way to save, I think it's like, I don't know, $700 cheaper or something, but it's the same power. I think you lose out on some weather resistance and you lose out on a few other things like dimming. It doesn't dim down to like 0.1%. But all in all, it's a great light. For today's use, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Still powerful, 
and it's gonna be able to give us that lift in the room that, that we need. And Justin asked if I wanna use this reflector, if it makes a big difference using a softbox. It makes a little bit of a difference, mostly in that it kills output. So if this is too powerful, I could just throw a softbox on there. However, since we're bouncing it to a white ceiling, if you wanna just pan up there real quick, show that ceiling, and then come on back. So since we're bouncing it to a white ceiling, it really doesn't make a giant difference because the ceiling now effectively becomes our light source. It is the light because the light's spreading across that white ceiling and then it's coming back down just from the, the same direction that the house lights would. Now the, the main difference would be instead of coming down at that 3200 color temperature like our original lights were, now it's gonna come down at 5600. It's gonna match that outside exterior and it's not gonna have that weird blue outside, orange inside look. It looks a little more professional in my opinion. All right, so now we're a lot closer to the shot that we want. It's got that sort of high key rebalance to outside. It's looking, a <clears throat> excuse me. It's looking a lot more natural. Now, when I shoot this on the actual cinema camera, not just the R3, outside should be looking pretty good. It's still probably equipping just a tiny bit. Not much though. But either way, it's a little bit of shape on the face. Still have that shadow side toward this, the camera. And we're not getting too much of a sourcey look. It looks a little better in my opinion than our original shot. So even for these corporate things, I'm still applying the same principles that we would on just basically a shoot that you do want a bit more of a cinematic look. So we're equipping on the windows super hard, so we'll go two stops, still equipping, and then we'll go four stops, and then now tiny bit of clip, but that's okay. It's bright and I'll check my LUT on and off. You can see I'm not really equipping. Looks pretty good. Next thing I'll address is house lights go off. Okay, cool. Thanks. So that's super moody looking. Now we want to address the moodiness. Even better, we just need to address that top corner there, and we'll fix that with that other 600. It's going to bounce into the ceiling. And now we're looking pretty good. Nice, bright, high key look, still retaining some of that contrast. And that is how you light a corporate office building. So right now we're getting the Aperture 600D out and one of my favorite things to do and you know what's kind of a boring conference room is you can put like a slash of light or like a ray of light because we had one in the beginning when the sun was in the perfect position but because the sun quickly moved out of the, out of the way, now what we're going to do is we're going to recreate basically the same thing that it was doing, same direction, same light quality and the way we're going to do that is with this guy. So this is the Aperture Spotlight. The spotlight mount's super cool because it creates a really hard source and it's really easy to basically focus the light, make the edges uh, harder or softer, and you can put different gobos in there, which basically creates different qualities to the light. So if you want to make a streak, like, like what would be coming from those uh, window blinds, we can basically do that with the spotlight. <laughs> 